As we've discussed in previous videos, the DC cannabis market is like the wild west of weed. For years, Congress has been blocking the local DC government from creating regulations to issue recreational licenses, despite the fact DC residents overwhelmingly voted to legalize cannabis in the infamous Initiative 71 or I-71. This is also despite the fact that the local DC government then codified the legalization in 2015. Because it had been blocked by Republicans, when the Democrats took control of the House, Senate, and White House in 2020, most observers, cannabis aficionados, and even the DC mayor and city council believed DC would finally get recreational dispensaries. That did not happen. Now, there have been two very serious developments in cannabis in DC that everyone in this space should be aware of. One is good for the consumers and medicinal dispensaries, and one is bad for gifting businesses, particularly brick and mortars. I'll explain both in this video. My name is Joseph Scrofano, and I'm the founder of Scrofano Law PC, a criminal cannabis and DUI defense firm in the District of Columbia that represents individuals under investigation or charged with a crime in DC, Northern Virginia, and the Maryland Capital Region. All right, let's start with the good. DC passed a law that allows for self-certification of a, a, a medical condition that allows DC residents um, to be eligible for medical cannabis cards as of August 5th, 2022. There's a link to register in the description of the video. Basically, there's an online form that allows the option to self-certify. And while DC used to require a physician's recommendation as part of the application process, this new self-certification option removes that requirement. That means any district resident over the age of 21 can get a medical cannabis card. This card gives the registration access to any of the city's seven medicinal dispensaries. Now, an important thing to know about getting a medical marijuana card, however, is that there is a federal law that prohibits anyone from owning or purchasing a firearm who has a medicinal marijuana card. So keep in mind, getting a medical marijuana card can impact your Second Amendment rights. The only requirement in the application for a medicinal card now is basically uploading a two inch by two inch passport type photo and providing proof of DC residency, like a driver's license or a DMV real ID card. In addition to proof of re residency, the applicant must upload a government issued photo ID. Once the applicant completes it and submits it online, ABRA will send a temporary patient registration approval that's valid for 30 days. Once approved after the 30 days, ABRA will send a permanent digital and physical registration card with a registration number. And up until August 18th, 2022, application fees are waived. And if the applicant applies by September 30th, then they will be issued a two year registration card. Non-DC re residents are not eligible for a medicinal card. However, DC medicinal dispensaries do offer for reciprocity to all 38 states and territories that have medical marijuana. So it's clear from this legislation that the district government is trying to accomplish two things here. And it's something I discussed may happen in a previous video discussing how DC council chair Phil Mendelson's multiple attempts to pass bills cracking down on gifting businesses have failed. First, they are definitely trying to find a way to get around Congress's ridiculous meddling in DC affairs, blocking recreational dispensary license. Second, they're clearly trying to divert demand from unregulated gifting businesses to the medical dispensaries, which are regulated. What they haven't done, which is something we had all hoped they would do, was drastically increase the number of available medicinal licenses so some of the gifting businesses could get into the medicinal licenses. The bill didn't add any new licenses, and there's currently only seven medical dispensaries in DC with only one new available license. In a lot of ways, this is a win for cannabis consumers, and it's definitely a win for the medical dispensaries. Now, whether DC residents avail themselves of this new option instead of just Googling for delivery services or visiting brick and mortars near where they live, we shall see. 
Now, this, of course, brings to the bad news on the supply side in the cannabis market and definitely bad news for gifting operations. On the same day self-certification went into effect, Abra announced in a Friday press release that the government had created a joint cannabis task force consisting of various district agencies that after a 30-day grace period will start cracking down on operating gifting businesses to, quote, verify compliance with District of Columbia legal requirements. ABRA specifically mentions DCRA, the Department of Health, the Office of Tax and Revenue, and the DC Fire and Emergency Medical Services. Noticeably absent from the press release and task force is the DC Metropolitan Police Department, so what role they'll have in this is unknown. The press release further states the district law requires edibles and other food products to be approved by DC Health and produced in compliance with DC DC food safety and hygiene laws. DCRA enforces whether the businesses have a proper business license and certificate of occupancy if it's a brick and mortar. The Office of Tax and Revenue obviously deals with taxes, and DC Fire and EMS will make sure all businesses are complying with DC Fire safety codes. Now, as anyone who runs a business in the District of Columbia knows, DC local government laws and regulations are not exactly small business friendly. Many business owners argue that the local DC government rules and regulations are burdensome, oppressive, and in some cases enforced arbitrarily. Whether any of these so-called inspections will lead to arrests is completely unknown. But even in the best case scenario where no arrests are made, this means brick and mortar establishments and perhaps even deliveries and online retailers are basically going to have these bureaucratic agencies up their asses looking for violations to crack down on gifting businesses. This could very much be the crackdown many of us cannabis lawyers have been warning will eventually come to pass in DC's Wild West cannabis market. Now, given that many of these businesses operating in plain sight are openly engaging in massive federal drug distribution conspiracies, it's certainly be a better outcome than FBI and DEA agents kicking down doors and handing out RICO indictments. Even stiff regulatory penalties are far better outcomes than federal or even superior court drug prosecutions. However, it's pretty clear that one way or another, major changes are coming to the DC cannabis market. Now, some estimates put the amount of illegal cannabis flowing through the district over the last several years in the tens to hundreds of millions of dollars. I think it's fair to predict that no matter what ABRA or the council says, some people or businesses will end up arrested in this enforcement action. Others will end up with protracted legal battles against oppressive local DC government agencies. Either way, if you are operating in the DC cannabis space right now, it's best to tread cautiously. Finally, is it a coincidence that longtime council chair Mendelssohn's bill to impose stiff civil penalties on gifting businesses failed mul multiple times and the, the, and the, the council managed to pass self-certification and now these government agencies have made it known that they're setting their sights on using existing laws to crack down on cannabis gifting operations to clear the way for some form of legal regulated cannabis distribution in the district? Like I always tell potential clients, the government wants its money, and it's going to get it one way or the other. If they can't charge exorbitant license, licensing fees for recreational dispensaries, it will use other tools in its disposal to get its piece of this highly profitable market. Now, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check out some of our other cannabis-related videos, including one, the future of the DC cannabis market, where at least one of my predictions, self-certification, did come true. Also, don't forget to like the video or comment on other topics you'd like to learn more about and subscribe to our channel for all things criminal cannabis and gun law related finally if you or a friend or loved one get caught up in the coming crackdown don't hesitate to contact scrofano law pc for a consultation